I'm sitting up straight because I just yeah. went to the chiropractor. Really? Yeah, all my That's back nice. problems come from the fact that I sit like slumped and then it pinches out my upper back. Really? Yeah, I got to fucking really? remember the Bruger method. I what? slid from the Bruger method. You keep your, I think that's what it's called. You keep your lower back just fucking like sucked in like that mm. and it keeps the spine straight because if you hunch, you end up paying for it up here. When you hunch the lower back, you pay for it in the upper back. Would you think it, would you even imagine that? No. Yeah, exactly. I, like I would have never even felt that. I feel like a dumbass. I went to the chiropractor two years later. The guy told me the same exact thing. I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. I can't work my fucking back. I'm a dumbass. Sure. I can't work the simple machinery known as a back without causing myself immense pain in the upper thoracic area. Shane, what the <laughs> hell's up, dude? <laughs> Nothing, <laughs> What the hell's man. up, man? <laughs> Nothing. How you feeling? I feel good. Me too. I feel like a young fighter. Do you really? Yeah, I feel like I'm a prime. Are you an SR fighter. right now? You're an SR. Uh, essentially, yes. Although I've been popping them off, dude. I've been dropping asses. The cup of Hermes is how how full is a cup of Hermes right now? Two days. That's basically it's halfway full. Four yeah. days, you have a full cup. I have one more day until I have one more day until my woman returns. I'll probably <sighs> retain the seed for her. Really? Yes. You're gonna hit her with a three day. Or? I'm gonna hit her with a solid three day. Oh, you're gonna give her the party weekend. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you're gonna do all Fourth of July weekend? I'm gonna give her the Fourth of July seed. <laughs> you're gonna give her the fireworks? Yes. The true God fireworks. Damn. Now it's time for the real fireworks. That's going to be nice. A real launch across uh, my girlfriend. That's going to be nice when you finally ejaculate. It's going to feel it's great. so much better when it's you do it with so another person. It's been so long since I've laid with a woman. Yeah, man. When you do it with another person, it's a whole different thing. Even if you're just masturbating and she's sucking your nipples because you begged. Because <laughs> you begged. <laughs> dude, does that happen sometimes? <laughs> yeah, dude. You said, can you suck like my nipples? like half my sex life is me masturbating and be like, can you just please suck my nipples? That's pretty fucking it's good, though. It's very nice, dude. Yeah, I can imagine it's that. It's a be... serious hack. It's I can what, imagine. Any girl can wiggle out of a blowjob, but if you like, can you just suck my nipples? They're like, okay, fine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. Damn. And it, uh, dude, it's the real deal. It's got to be a little disappointing for her, though. To I be mean, like, damn, my husband's like a fucking freak. <laughs> But like not in a good, not like he really fucks me hard or any of that. It's like, no, he's like a weird, he squirms. I suck his nipples. Dude, do you ever get your nipple sucked like, oh, while you're jerking off? Not while, not it, while jerking it's off. It's basically getting laid. It is getting laid. It, it's, it's getting yeah, laid. For dude. sure it is. I'm not discounting. I, yes, you are correct. Sensationally, it's That's getting a fucking laid. wild sex act. That's like more <laughs> sinful than most sex acts. That's for real. That's bad, dude. No, Stop. It's not. That's bad. Dude, that's, that's gay. sweet release. That's bad. No way, dude. It's a sweet release. I believe that's it. Creative. And I'm thinking about it and I would like it. You dude, don't think the- you don't think I want that? <laughs> <laughs> you don't think I want to be doing that stuff? <laughs> I like seeing them. I like feeling her get creative on it too. Because they switch it up on you. Oh, they'll you'll start feeling it. They hurt dude. It's, I'm telling you, they're like a seventh grader on the clitoris. They're like, what do I even do what to do a guy's do? nipples? They have no so, clue. Give it a shot, lady. And they start getting creative. I, I swear to God, she's doing the alphabet. Take one of those fucking like six inch hairs. <laughs> she was trying to pull one of those out of me. There's some of those things, are... dude. I got four chest hairs, and she's against all of them. You need to let them stand, dude. My this... my chest hair is coming in nice. Really? It's coming. I'm well. I mean, it's still like a patch of 
pubes. It looks terrible. Still. But it's good. Do you have like a like a focal point? Right here, yeah. Lucky. Right in between. I just have random nipple hairs, dude. Still. I need permission from Louis J. I don't think I'm gonna get it, so fuck it. I'm just gonna tell you the story last night. You gonna beg for forgiveness later? Yeah, if he doesn't whatever. We don't have to. It's nothing bad. I'm sure they've talked about it publicly before. Sure. It's I've never heard this. Mm. We were sitting up we were sitting up on Ari's deck last night and uh, you know, it was right after the fireworks. The firework display from Ari's roof is sick it's as cool as it gets and i was sitting up there while i was watching the fireworks i was like it was actually like a i was getting in i was deep in thought i was like damn america fight and then jay who didn't climb up the ladder started playing like me so horny on the music and i realized i was gay for looking at the fireworks and being like man america you were having a peak experience yeah i was having a nice experience anyway we get down we're sitting down we're all talking having a good time and then we notice you can see the freedom tower we're like damn i can't believe they tried to 9-11 us bullshit pieces of shit and then uh i know you're talking about by the way dropped this bomb he said lewis gomez because we were all talking about people's experiences that were in the city during 9-11. Mm-hmm. Like, Justin Silver was there. He was like, yeah, my girlfriend showed up covered in ash. I told her to get out of this. <laughs> Some girl he was fucking showed up, to, like, banged on his door. That's how he found out about 9-11. And he woke up, and the girl he was with was covered in fucking dust from the towers. Really? Yeah. And he was like, be gone? I don't think. We were making fun of him saying he kicked her out. Yeah, true. I don't think he did kick her out. Like, you look like a coal miner. Get out. Get out of here. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> You're covered in cancer. <laughs> um, so then we get to Jay just goes, yeah, Louis J. Gomez rollerbladed it out of the city on 9-11. What? This, this brought on about two straight hours of crying laughing, dude. Louis J. Gomez was... That then we called him to get the story. He was at the he was at a hotel. He lived, I think, at the Chelsea Hotel, which was a fucking dump That's in Midtown. And uh, when 9-11 happened, he decided to rollerblade to Rockaway, New York. So which Puerto is, Rican goodbye. It was a complete... <laughs> dude, it's the longest fucking trek. It's so long. He, he rollerbladed across the George Washington Bridge on 9-11. Rollerbladed. And he was fatter back then. He was a big guy back then. Lip ring, fat dude, what? rollerblading out of 9-11 from, dude, across the George Washington Bridge. We were like, how long is that fucking thing? I Googled it. They were like, at the time, it was built as the longest bridge on earth. <laughs> I mean, everything is the funniest thing. He got across. And then that's nothing. Rock weighs 30 miles. What? It's literally like further than Levity Live from dude, here. That confirms my theory that Louis J is a Streets of Rage character. It's dude. That's imagine nuts, seeing nine eleven and be like, "I gotta get out of here." <laughs> Rollerblading. Was he already strapped up? Or I don't know. No, no, that was that was the debate because there was rumors that he was rollerblading while nine eleven happened, and he was just like, "I'm out," and turned around. Turns out, no, he he's strapped up. He, he strapped saw up. he saw the smoke and said, "Something <laughs> something ain't right. I gotta get out of the city." <laughs> now it's time for a fucking six hour journey. <laughs> Dude, that's like 25,000 calories. It's the craziest thing I've ever heard. And then I was thinking like there had to be fire trucks coming in on the George Washington Bridge that one of the last things some of those heroes saw was a fat Puerto Rican dude rollerblading out of the city. I mean, there's got to be when they do like code red, code orange. It must have been like that's code orange. That's a bad problem. When the Ricans put on the blades, it's like we're, we're <laughs> when this the Puerto serious. Ricans are fucking rollerblading. And also, one of the guys, one of the firefighters' thoughts had one of the last thoughts one of those guys had to have was like, "Fucking lose, like, <laughs> <back in." laughs> yeah." So yeah. that was uh, that was about two hours of laughing last night. It's very funny. That was giggle time, dude. How did he get back? Did he put him around his neck? I don't know. I don't know. He No, he went to his parent or somebody's house. Really? I think his house or his, somebody, sister's house, somewhere. Damn, his bug out bag's just rollerblades? His bug out bag was rollerblades. Jesus Christ. And then, you know, there's no phones. He had to rollerblade for five hours and then show up. We were laughing so hard at that fucking first glass of water he had from the sink. <laughs> just like, <laughs> turn on the TV. What the fuck's going on? <laughs> Five hours later, they're like, yeah, another plane hit. <laughs> oh fucking my God. they fell. <laughs> like, he might have seen it from the bridge, which would have been fucking crazy. 
How how nice is that? If he did go to his kin's house, you're like, oh my god, I wonder if he's okay. And you see him rollerblading over the horizon, you're like, thank god. Yeah, you're like, damn, thank god. Well, he he had no reason. <laughs> he was in like the Bronx. He Pedro Revere. Dude. It's so crazy. He to Pedro try Revere, to dude. He told him the enemy was coming. <laughs> Pedro Revere. Yeah. Damn, that's awesome. Yeah. That's a good fact to know about him. Yeah, and then we just told they just told stories about him for hours, and it's he's the funniest. He is the funniest dude of all time. Easily, dude. He's Easily. the funniest dude of all time. That's a peak experience, rollerblading away from 9-11. Rollerblading out of 9-11. And is, as much as it sucked for all those people who died and lost loved ones, getting to rollerblade away from that was probably pretty sick for him. Having like a he, real, like, I got like a die. He had a die hard four. He had the fucking, I don't know what he had. He was, Nobody, <laughs> it was the worst idea I've ever heard. He was Lewis J. Willis, dude. He fucking, he, he said the rumble strips were rattling his bones. He was on the side of the highway the whole way. That's scary. He rollerbladed on the side of the highway the whole way. That's scary. Dude, you know how hard it is to get up to the George Washington Bridge? The ramps? I can't imagine. I couldn't imagine that. How steep the fucking ramps are. Like, and they're, it's like a mile. That's crazy. Spiral uphill that he Dude. rollerbladed on. He, he probably. That's free. Yeah, that's free. On 9 11, dude, please. Yeah, truly they probably raised the toll. They're, like, they're going to say, guys, get in or out. We got something. Imagine you getting a ticket from that. Like check the date and you're like motherfucker, dude. Yeah, hit you on nine eleven oh one. You gotta dude, save that's... that. Justin said he had footage of it. He said what? he was filming from his roof and he was like, "I've never watched it since." I was like, "Make sure you save that." Yeah, that's like important. It's priceless. He's like, "Why is it important?" Everybody, I was like, "Dude, just if your grandpa had footage of fucking Pearl Harbor, you'd be like, that's yeah, cool. I want to know that. Yeah. yeah, does he still have it?" He says he does. We, I'm going to check in on him today. Got so you better not have been fucking lying to me on yeah, the roof last night. Yeah, true. If you were lying to me, I'm going to be pissed. You didn't film shit, dude. You didn't film anything. <laughs> That's good to know about anyway. Lewis J. Yeah. So you, should, you should do an annual Lewis J. rollerblade a No one could do that. True. Uh, yeah, you I, got last deep. night, I was like, I would pay him money. I would have to find out how much money it would cost for him to do it again and for me to film. It's actually really him. dangerous what he did. I think everything was at standstill. Oh, traffic yeah, also, yeah. but that's good. Yeah, did you ever walk across like a live bridge? No, I did in New Orleans, dude. It's scary as fuck. Yeah, I'm I sure. got lost in New in New O, dude. In a fucking, you got lost. It I was hard for you to breathe, huh? It was hard for me to breathe, huh? I went through where basically juvenile around that area, but it was wiped out due to the floods. Oh, I told you that that fact, Wardy. Yeah, Wody. how about that, Wody? Comes from somebody who lives in your ward in New Orleans. Yep. Uh huh. What ward did juvenile live in? He's not Magnolia Projects, is he? What? What'd you say? You putting smut on? He's Magnolia, bro. Oh, okay. He's Magnolia till, I, till we both so die. So I got it correct. Yeah, he's Magnolia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's nine. Is that Ward nine? Third, Third Ward. Third Ward. Third Ward. I think I was in the ninth. I was in the ninth. You were in the ninth. If I, yeah, if I, so if I saw the fucking I think five the ninth ward, Was that the one who got fucking leveled by Katrina, the ninth Ward? Yeah, that's what I, I, I had. A, yeah. I had to walk back to the ninth. You had to walk through that swamp. I had to get back to the ninth, dude, to my Wodies. What were your Wodies up to? There was nothing remaining. It was it was literally like a, a a camp for migrant workers, which my brother found for us to stay at, which is fucking weird. And uh, what were you guys doing down there? We went to New Orleans to party right oh. after the flood. Really? <laughs> like it was like two years after. Yeah, it still wasn't. It repaired. was still fucked up. They had the yeah. X's on the houses from like how many people were inside. It was really really sad. My brother was like, "Yo, I booked us a sick place. We can like camp." And then like go right into town and oh have fun. Oh my god, camping in New Orleans sounds like it was crazy. It was a crazy. Now that I think, we're, I was like twenty four, and it was just it, they had found a lot that had gotten flooded, and these like Korean dudes leveled it and laid gravel. Even staying, dude, like staying in a nice hotel in New Orleans for like three days still sucks. I bet. Like when you're fucking hammered, yeah. you know, like drinking those fucking hurricane things, dude. Dirty city. I mean, yeah. it's a cool place. But I can't it's, imagine getting shit faced and then staying in a fucking tent. Dude, it was like five miles from the fucking where we're supposed oh my to be. Goodness, and it, wasn't, it was too cold for a tent, so we all slept in a van together, and like four dudes would sleep in a tent. And there was these uh, like Michigan guys who started like they were migrant workers from Michigan who came down to like get in on all the like the rebuilding action. Yeah. And they were also like smoking crack and stuff, but they had a nice fire going. They're probably ready to rebuild. They were hit that crack. You're like, they were right, fucking pumped, it's time. dude. Dude, you hit the crack. You they drive, they drive down to search for work. Hit the crack. Get out there. They're doing like power lines. Katrina didn't stand a chance against those guys. Nah, dude, not at all. Guys on like, crack from Michigan cleaning. Couldn't stop them. And then us down there to party, dude. And you guys down there to mess it up, have fun. You got you guys thought that we're stimulating the economy. You thought Katrina was bad. Here comes a real hurricane. <laughs> it's the yeah. McCusker brothers, dude. It was. We're a, staying in a van. 
In a van, the ninth ward, the only thing there, it was McDonald's, and then there was a wishy-washy across the street. Oh, no. The guy, I didn't patronize. You guys were hitting vans and fucking wishy-washies. I didn't. And McDonald's. I didn't patronize it. And then heading into Bourbon Street. I wasn't I wasn't that paid to patronize it yet, dude. I, but. I'm not putting that on you. That would have been, the one guy did it. The one guy, one of the guys in our party actually smoked crack and then went and fucking patronized the wishy-washy. Hit crack with the Michiganders. Uh, he actually hit crack in a bathroom and then claimed he thought it was weed. It was like, right, right, bro. It's right. exactly where you would do crack. New Orleans bathroom? Yeah. I was like, they don't smoke crack out of like ornate, sick glass, dude. You smoke crack out of a crack pipe. <laughs> it's like, whatever, yeah, it dude. I'm going, do you want to come to the wishy-washy or not? And I was like, nah, I'm good. But yeah, he went, he went, he smoked crack and then went yeah, to the wishy Yeah, you killed his vibe, dude. Well, the problem you was, the he was, problem on crack was he about went to get jerked with, off dude. with all the boys. He went with all the boys and we were so close to the wishy-washy. We watched him walk over there and then we clocked him when he came back. And I'm like, dude, you were there for 10 minutes. What's good? He was like, dude, she went reverse cowgirl. And I came instantly. Yeah. <laughs> That's fucking nice, yeah, dude. That's really they nice. They were down there fighting for their lives, dude. They didn't see a single person. And then finally, the migrant worker showed up and the one dude or one boy on crack. Yeah. He rolled up and they're like, finally. The wishy-washy people. Imagine just getting leveled from a hurricane. You're like, where's the clientele? It's just some white guy on crack. And they're like. Jackpot. Hit him with the reverse cowgirl. I'm going to make this guy pop. Bring out the, dude, she had it all saved up. This guy's about to pop. Quick. He didn't stand a chance. But yeah, dude. Hit the crack. Get the reverse. That's. I mean, that's that's a decent night. Smoke the crack in the bathroom. Get the reverse cowgirl. Not bad at all. I'll tell you what wasn't a great night for me. What? I did the barstool case race. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't hated myself more than the next morning in a Why? very, very long what time. What was the fuss? I did well. I mean, obviously, did exactly what we came to do, which was win. Yeah, drank as fast as I could, as much as I could. Yeah, and then you know, how much did you win by? Chaos and soup. I think one. Really? Got down to the wire, and I said, "Roan, I got these last three. Sit back. Got three done." Said we won. Uh, I was like, we won. Fuck you guys. You did it like that. You fucking chugged the last three when they yeah. thought they had a game. Yeah, they thought. Yeah, they thought. So they were up by two. They might have been tied or up one. It and was then you nice. Went. I haven't. I haven't mustered the strength to rewatch it because of the shame and guilt. But here's what the real funny part is. What? So, you know, I'm got the face paint, fighting dudes, arguing, yelling, being a big mouth, being a big shot. Was it one on yeah, like four or did no, you? No, have- it was me and Ron. Nice. Yapping, being arrogant, not Sorry. good. Everything I hate, I was, really? dude. I thought I was a good time guy. Turns out I was. Well, you were in a you were in a competitive environment. I was. It was competitive, and it felt like they were, you know, trying to gang up. They're gunning for you, dude. They, you know, that's what happens, dude. I'm telling you, I've I, moved on since, but that took three days. Really? That took three days of deleted social media, in a tomb, bro. Uh, Sad. My baby's gone. My girlfriend's oh, yeah, out of town. True. Just got off the tour. Yeah. It was a big dump. You know what I mean? A big, you were Bob Seger. Sad. I was sad. You were Seeger, dude. What, what do you mean? When here I am on yeah. the road again. I was on the road again. Now I'm home, dude. Do you know the verse from that sad. song? Which part? It's like, I light a cigarette and wonder. I tried to start a playlist of introspective badass songs, and I got like three. I don't know any <laughs> other ones. Here I am. I was introspective and badass. No, that's your I was literally There's sitting three here like, am I going to change everything about my life? Oh, God, everyone's right. I do suck. <laughs> that was the problem. Is I like the next morning, I thought it was fun. I was like, damn, that was a fun fucking time. It was. I, I love those guys. I saw a that clip was of it. Great. It's very aesthetically pleasing. Of it was seeing crazy. You sitting there in face paint and just blame. Being like, no. Can't believe this guy's trying to fuck. It's also a very funny thing to judge. There's yeah. 15 people getting hammered and to watch that and be like, that didn't su- exceed my expectations. Yeah, it's it, like, took, dude, it took three days for us finally to be like, actually, it's cornier to sit there and be like, fuck these guys. Of like, dude, we literally, those were astronauts. You witnessed dudes launching. Yeah. And you judged them, dude. Those are the men in the arena. Yeah. We all agreed. Let's get shit faced for three hours on camera. Yeah. What else is funnier than that? It's Turns out a lot of people don't like it and they're mad about it. <laughs> is that a whole show in and of itself or is that like a, like a specialty That's thing? A, what That show is called Yak. Is that a thing he does all the time? Because that's they, a, This is the second time they've done the case race. Yeah, that's a not a very sustainable was like two, or two and a half hours. It yeah. was a lot more fun. This time they brought in me. You're a D1 athlete, dude. I'm a D1 athlete, dude. They can't take, they can't, they can take you off the gridiron, bro. Did you notice bro. the bucket hat? 
This they is can a, take you off the gridiron. I mean, they can't. They can't take the gridiron. Will nowadays, Compton bro. was there. He's a ten-year NFL vet. So you know, there's two. He was on the other team. There was two D1 athletes. So you have two basically NFL <laughs> stars. You had two NFL stars. Basically two. I mean, I, yeah. <laughs> I did three weeks D1. You should go to your Wikipedia and just say you played for like the Jaguars. Just say you did the camp for the Jaguars. Well, now that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, just, just do it. <laughs> yeah, say you're it. a pro football player. But uh, Could you walk on? at the In the NFL? You'd have to bag groceries first and then get yeah, in shape from bagging could, groceries. But then, then I need walk. to pray a lot. <laughs> True. I need to pray. Dude, you're fucking like 10 decades of the rosary away from walking on. If you started bagging groceries and saying Hail Marys, dude, you could definitely <laughs> walk on. If they were like, run one sprint, they'd be like, you're cut. <laughs> if they saw me try to you run. You need a break. Yeah, I would need a couple breaks. You need a pit crew. They, uh, that would suck, dude. So here's the here's the part people don't know. True. The next morning, obviously, devastated, devastatingly hungover. Like, it's, <sighs> this is after a month on the fucking road. Ooh. This is after Burt tour and doing Rogan. What time was the case race, though? 6 p.m., is when we start, like, start around six. What'd you do after it? Just lingered. Okay. Lingered around the office, talking. You didn't keep the party going. I kept the party going a little. Really? Went out to the bar with Feidelberg. <laughs> got fucking. <laughs> it was a nightmare, dude. Oh my god. It was a nightmare. So you got. Hammered. I was just drinking. No, I was drinking water at the bar. That's sick. That's got sick. to the bar and I was in face paint. Like, <laughs> could I get water? Uh, the next morning, I had to go do a sit-down interview one-on-one -on -one with <gasps> Andrew Yang. Oh, no. Bro. I, I didn't had, put the pieces together. This interview is going to be the craziest-looking fucking thing on earth. <laughs> I'm dark red. <laughs> it's in a video. It's going to be crazy-looking. I'm dark red, hung out of my mind, hung over. Oh. Like, so sad. Oh. Face-to-face, -face, dude. We sat in chairs face-to-face. <laughs> In a hot room. It was hot. Uh, of course. It was a small hot room with lights face to face. Oh. And first thing we got to address, SNL. Why'd you say that about Asians? And bro, I'm sitting there like. You should have spent watching. I mean, I didn't even mean it, you know. You should have like watched <laughs> like, the clip. You should have like watched the clip from Barstool Case Race, dude. I was just, what, what was the word? They, what was your two options? What? Josh, yeah. giving guff. I was giving guff. <laughs> yeah, I was giving guff. <laughs> And you got, like, dude, I already addressed this yesterday on the case race. I was, I was just guff. giving guff. And that dude, How'd you literally, that? literally like, with, I think still maybe like eyeliner in this interview, dark red. My face is dark red. <laughs> you should have got heavily sweating. made up. I mean, it was. You should have sprayed that, dude. <laughs> I basically did. There's like, there's like weird, like it was black around my eyes. Did they give you makeup? <laughs> no. I'm for real dark red in this. You should request and like, just eyeliner whenever you do press. You have full goth. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't I know. Mean, and then we just talked politics and I was like, yeah, Trump is bad, bro. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was Andrew Yang, by the way, is the man. He rules. He fucking rules. But with that, that interview, I've been waiting for a long time to talk to him. Oh. And I've shit the bed dude you got fucking hammered the day before. showed up showed up and fucking face i didn't realize that was the day before that it was the day before that that's a booking nightmare that was a nightmare that was a nightmare Jesus. and then you want to talk anxiety that fucking uber home i was just like what the fuck am i doing because i was wondering i mean the case race yeah i could see that but that colliding those two worlds is tough Case race into the national spotlight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shifting gears. All right, now it's time for me to sit down with a former presidential candidate. Here we go. Is he going again? He's going to probably go again. I don't think he is. Really? I think he's working on his own political party now, the forward party. Good. Yeah. When the hell is he launching it? I don't know. Tell him to hurry up and launch that thing, dude. Our country's that. in fucking shambles. Country stinks. I, I hate reading that. Like, the, democracy is in a precarious situation. It's like, dude. I don't know if democracy. Yeah, I mean, democracy. Yeah, with is all bad. these people sharing their opinions, you don't like. They're fucking ruining the democracy. Yeah, they're ruining the democracy. It's definitely not the lobbyists and corporations. <laughs> yeah. That's not it. Yeah, it's, it's got to be Twitter. the people on Facebook. It's got to be your aunt on Facebook <laughs> ruining democracy. Putting democracy with memes. in peril. Yeah, that stinks. You know the Russian memes? They're destroying democracy. Not the fucking lobbyists. I can't lobbyists. wait to see this interview. I can. I'll never watch it. I'll never no. watch the case race. I'll never watch that. <laughs> this is a week. That's one week, dude. We all have weeks. I mean, it's pretty it cool. It's pretty wild week. It's a pretty wild week. It was totally intentional. 
Yeah. That's the thing. Like I decided to do that sober. That's I was crazy. Like, this will be crazy. It's going to be nuts. This will be fun. It is funny. Again, <laughs> from a meta perspective, that's the problem. There's a huge swath of the population that yeah. cannot adopt a meta perspective. They're ill-equipped. No. They're neurologically ill-equipped to adopt a meta perspective. Yeah. And it's most of the country. I, I yeah. hate to say it. Dude, fucking indiv- individuality is a recent phenomenon in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Like people to have a distinct identity is like maybe 2,500 years old, 3,000. Yeah. And it's still not everyone caught on. Yeah. Most people are just kind of bumbling through life and they're just like, give me a football team. Give me a local union sticker to put on my car. And it's like game over. That's me. That's nice. I'm a steam fitter and I like this team. And it's just this is my I've adopted my parents spiritual and political views. And it's just don't bring anything outside of that to my attention or I will freak the fuck out on you. That's That's like 85 percent of the country. It is. It is. Be I'm, that it is because I was I was driving today and I saw a guy with the sticker and it was like an Irish flag like whatever stick it was like an Irish flag going into like a like an asphalt like a, not an asphalt like a brick layer thing yeah. a trough I'm such a fucking elite a little fucking <laughs> <laughs> shovel thing <laughs> <laughs> such a fucking elite dude. you are an elite I never knew what things called what's that thing called that you just get a little bit of spackle a trowel what's the bucket called a trough that's what pigs eat trowel the little shovel is called a trowel that's what i call, I call my it. girlfriend's butt dude the trowel. The trowel. that's the trough dude i can't wait to see her i'm gonna come out of the brush like a fucking feral hog dude, dude. She would she's gonna run get, back she to would that get down with that she's gonna run she would oh get down God. with that if you can't <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i've been down i've been down on myself quite a bit this week yeah awfully sad then last night was, I needed that one. I, I haven't hung out with the bros. I stopped talking to everybody. Nice. I haven't talked to any of my friends. I haven't talked to you. I haven't talked to. You need it, dude. A month of not talking to people. You mean you need a fermentation period. Everyone needs a fermentation period. The fucking lie they call depression is just fermentation. Yeah. It's people brewing in their own greatness. And then they emerge out of the other side. Thank you. But, you know, people got tricked. You know what? I was, I was you'd like this. I've been listening to this book. Uh, it's fucking carlin's book mm-hmm. so he's like he wrote a book dan carlin yeah about he has time, a couple yeah. yeah this one's about like this one's called the end is always near or something but i've only been listening i've i bought it this week i've been listening to it while i sleep which is tough he's a tough one to listen to does he narrate he's loud. Audiobooks? yeah yeah he's like why would they he's do true. that he's pumped it's loud so it's tough to sleep mm-hmm. to but he's yeah. been talking about how if you really think about it uh nearly every single generation in every society has been victims of child abuse. Mm -hmm. So the entire culture was abused as children. Yeah. So obviously they were going to be fucking whacked out of their fucking minds. Yeah, dude. And wild. This is the first time in a long time, the last like 70 years that babies haven't been totally fucked with. (laughs) That's so funny. And like slapped. Yeah. And like hammered. They would just pour booze and shit in the kid's mouth. Yeah, dude. Mom would be drunk. You weren't allowed to speak. They'd just put them outside. There were cultures that would just like fucking. Dude, my uncle beat used, the shit my uncle used like, to get tied to the porch. Yeah, beat, beating your kid. Not like, not, like a, not like a spank. Yeah, like, man. Oh, for real, it was good to just beat the fuck out of your kid. Dude, when, whenever I asked my I'm like, I was like talking about putting Maya down. My mom's like, yeah, whenever, like, when I was younger, my Kevin and then my cousin Neil, and like the old, like the three oldest cousins on my mom's side. My mom's like, I would lay in bed like this and just trap them with my legs, and then until they eventually would stop kicking and screaming, and they would fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> you go like this and play, play lay down. <laughs> I do that to my nephew now, and it's so fun because they hilarious. can't do anything. Like, ah, Dude, the ah. fucked up part is you kind of have to over. Like, yeah, that's the thing too, because I like I don't want to beat the fuck out of my kids, but you have yeah. to like. There's times when you have to physically restrain them because they're just so wrong about what's going on. Yeah. And they're just like, ah! and you're like, you have to hold them down you're wrong. and they have to gas and they eventually just go. Ah. <laughs> it's fucked up, dude. And then they wake up like <sighs> they wake up and it's I'm just so sorry. It's just good vibes. They wake up and they're yeah. like, what's good? They yeah. completely don't remember. Sorry it about that. They're just a little orb of energy, dude. They're completely untethered. Like yeah. you have to like chisel them into people. It's fucked up. It was talking about like some of the ancient I mean, Spartans, oh. hilarious. The baby, this baby's weak. Throw him off that fucking cliff <laughs> all the time. I mean, leaving babies outside, be like, leave him outside. Let him get tough for the weather. They <laughs> just leave babies outside Dude, in the elements. I see. Obviously, uh, they die or get picked up by a dog. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like just 
They yeah. were property, dude. They were, you had a kid and you're like, I can't wait to send this little fucker into the factory. Yeah, it's factory time. And like the beginning, in like the early 1900s, you're like, sweet. At least yeah. I can send this dumbass in the factory. This would be to make a dollar a day. It was like six year olds. You'd be like, you got to start pulling your weight. And they'd be like falling, like getting their arms ripped off in a fucking. Yeah. And yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. But it's funny too, because even in my family, they don't let like little boys cry. There's like four year olds. And anytime they cry, there's like nine people be like, yo, don't cry. Don't cry. Knock it off. Don't cry. That's the, probably good though. Dude, my cousin, one of my little, it was like my cousin's kid. He, uh, he's the sweetest fucking kid. Is that why dude. you cry? I'm a sensitive, I'm a sensitive I'm type. I'm a sensitive guy myself. I'm a sensitive type. Dude, this little That's kid. That's why you have outbursts of like. Oh, dude, big time. Yeah. I still like. everyone was like, don't cry. It now kills it's time me. to cry. I'm a sensitive. Dude, this yeah. little kid, I was watching him. He finished some of his ice cream and went, here you go, dad. I'm full. You can have the rest of my ice cream. And I was like, what a fucking sweetheart. And I was telling his mom, like, he's the sweetest kid. And she was like, dude, we were at the beach recently and someone was he's maybe eight years old and they're hitting him with a very effective move calling him by his mother mother's maiden name rather than his actual last yeah, name that'll get you. so they're hit or chanting it at him hitting and he's like that's not my last name that's not my last name finally he fucking cried and they're like dude you can't cry about that and he's like mom he hurt my heart yeah <laughs> he hurt my heart mom <laughs> i was like damn dude so he did he's exactly correct <laughs> so right they hurt he was, his heart he was in tune with reality yeah, that's exactly what happened Hit you with your mother. Someone hit me with my mother's maiden name five times. I'm like, dude, you're hurting my heart. What stop. you're doing right now is- I'm my dad's last name. You're making a fool of me. And it hurts. <laughs> so stop. <laughs> stop or I'm, something bad's going to happen. <laughs> you're not going to like- You should start every Remember time- being eight and being like, you're not going to like me when I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would like, just cry. Yeah. I would just cry. I would cry. You didn't spaz. think you were a fucking. You didn't think you were Wolverine or Hulk. No, Someone no. would get me going. I'd be like, I would like strike out and I would strike out. I would strike out and kickball and get ridiculed off my front lawn and run inside. I'm like, they make shut up, man. Shut up, man. Just yeah. run inside. And then, dude, it's funny. You just black out and you come back like, what's up, bro? You completely forget about. You forget about it. Can I play again? <laughs> yeah. Get in here, <laughs> dude. You go from like your most of your young life is just like insane psychotic crying fits, and you just come out of them, and you're just kind of like <laughs> you have to tone. You get like hammered into ho toning that down, and then your boss yeah. sends you an email, and you're like, <laughs> 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 yeah, just in the feed. Yeah, twenty you, years later, your arteries are like <laughs> twenty years later. <laughs> I can't let anyone know how much this affects me. <laughs> oh man, it's killing me inside. Buddy. Every day's a slow grind. Yes. A buddy of mine just went through a breakup. <gasps> hurt my heart. It hurt bro. his heart. It hurt. His heart was hurt and I could tell. It hurt your heart. And it hurt my heart. It made me sad because <laughs> I was like, damn, there's nothing worse. A breakup. Bro, I'm like a up. sad breakup. He, yeah, he I sure, I sure. said his girl was like, I, a month ago, I started this process. <gasps> I'm, I'm moving out. Oh. I need to get all my stuff. My dad's coming tomorrow. I was like, <sighs> Bro, it's the worst. It's the worst going through a breakup because no one else cares. No. Everyone else is like, "Yeah, so what? Yeah, get another one. Shut yeah. up about it." And you're like, "You don't understand how much I loved her, and this is it's her." And then he he brought up a fact. He was like, "She works at a bar, and I know there's fucking dudes. Oh yeah, that have been way." I've, he's like, "I've been to the bar. There's oh, dudes yeah. that show up to try to hit on her." And he's yeah. like, and "Tonight, I'm not with her. We just broke up. He's going back. Those dudes are going for it." And I was like, bro, that's that's just a story. I'm in so your head, sorry, bro. dude. I'm, it's not a story in his head. I believed it. Wait, how old are they? Uh, she's young. Yeah, release her to the fucking wolves, dude. True. Release her to the wolves. I, I mean, of course, that's the callus. That's she's the callus. She's a chamber maiden, dude. That's the callus way to look at it. But I I've know, been it's there. I've up. been there, brother. I know. I know. And Let's I was like, sell. I told it. I gave him the advice that I wish someone would give me when you're going through a breakup. Try your hardest not to do anything gay. <laughs> because in a month, you're going to regret it so much, dude. You don't send an email. You're mentally wearing, you're wearing, a, you're wearing a Paris beret, dude. You don't write a poem. For two months. Don't fucking. Yeah. Don't drink. Don't drink. Because that's the problem. You'll get hammered. And you'll be like, that's the long text start. You start pulling your heart uh, see, out. See, that's, I, I, I kind of disagree. You hit the shots? I could hit, I could hit the bar and be like, forget about her. Really? I could do that. When I was going, but then now you're staring down a hangover. That's what I'm saying. The next morning is what? Yes, you're right. I've never, I've never gotten the like analgesic effects of alcohol. It just, it's like a highway to me crying hard. 
I'm not going to forget anything. I'm going to remember everything and be like. <laughs> I mean, I will say during the drinking, you can. That's the thing. So, like, I, I've been through a the, the big one when I broke up was sad. I was very sad. Yeah. Even though I, I was the one who, like, initiated it for, like, a year. That's sad. But then finally, when it came down to it, I was very sad. Yeah. But I could, I could drink. Like, I drank that night and I was like, fuck, whatever. Look, yeah. I don't need her. She's great. I wish her the best. Yeah. I woke up the next day like, <laughs> no, no, oh god, my baby. <laughs> I was like, I threw away a fucking marriage for stand up. Oh fuck. Yeah. And that was back when things weren't going great. That's tough. I was like, this might not work. That's tough. Now look at me, dude. <laughs> It had to be King done. King of the world. It had to be done. Everyone's gunning for me now. <laughs> Everyone's trying to beat you <laughs> drinking beers and stuff. Everyone's trying to make me chug beers all the time, dude. No. I'm yeah. done. True. No more chugging beers. Hang the jersey, bro. dude. Hang the jersey. I mean, I, it's, it's, uh, immediately <clears throat> Sean Patton went on bonfire and challenged me to a fucking drink off. And I was like, for real, I'm done. He's got to go through. K- now, right, you can, yeah. now you can set up like a Mortal Kombat period. Somebody needs to get pyramid. to me. I am Goro. Yeah, dude. somebody needs to get up to me. Yeah, you got to fight. Sub but zero. I need. I'm gonna. Yeah, we're gonna take it easy for a little while. Yeah, yeah. That's a tough thing. Which has been tough because this week, I like. I was like, all right, and I just happened to have fucking seven spots every night. So that's long, dude. That's yeah, usually that's where fucking you drink a lot. because two's you, long. You One's long. It, arrive at seven thirty, leave at one thirty, yeah. and the whole time in between spots, you're just sitting at a bar. Yeah. And it, and you feeling good because you just did stand up. You feeling true. like, oh man, I'm on. T- I'm the best. Yeah, I'm so cool. No, that's or true. you have a bad set and you're like, fuck, <laughs> I got to drink. I need my, to get out of my head. I got to drink my way out of this. <laughs> but this week, yeah, seven spots just about every night. Didn't drink. Nice. I had like one or two, then just water. Not bad. Which is doable. I can do it. Yeah. So I'm dude. happy about that. One or two beers is good for you, according to the World Health. One or two beers is good for you. Yeah. No doubt in my mind. Although they found that a lot of the effects of having one or two beers are just the fact that you're around other people and you're not alone. Mm. So it's better for you to have one to two beers a day and be around people than have yeah. no beers and just be alone all the time. Yeah. According to the World Health Organization. Being alone is tough. Yeah, it can get to some people. Yeah. It can get to people. I, can, I think I could spend a lot of time by myself. I More do. than the average person. I actually do. Yeah. Actually, no, I don't. I've never. Really? I'm always around motherfuckers. If you're outside, yeah, I guess so. You're, Almost constantly. I can I can clock decent amount of days very alone, and I'll never get to do it pretty much ever again for a very long time. Yeah, you're probably fucked. die. That'll be it. I'll die. Towards the end, you'll probably get old. You and your wife will resent each other. You've yeah, seen it. get they some space. Don't talk. You're just yeah. by yourself sitting in a recliner. For sure. I got, dude. I got hammered the other. I was so I, my new tradition now is on Sundays, put the I put my eye to the nap, yeah. and I'm like, I'm gonna go chill. It's my chill time. I drink my weed juice. I have it in the fridge. Yes, I went to my office and filled up like five liter bottles and I stashed them in my fridge. Yes, I finally was yes. like went to my wife. And I was like, I'm filling up weed juice. I'll be back. I kept trying to come up with a good excuse. And I was like, no, I'm getting weed juice. It was time to deal in reality. And you did. It was. And, and that I went, was good. I filled up all my weed juices. I have in the fridge. So I chug a bunch of weed juice and I lay down and just go into basically probably a theta state if I had to guess. Yeah. I just lay there and I don't really nap. Undoubtedly a theta state. I don't, I don't nap. <laughs> I was in a couple of theta states really? the last couple of months, dude. <laughs> I can't. Uh, yeah, I got to keep. I don't nap, but I disappear into like a realm of like incoherent thought that makes sense until I wake up. Actually, I was meditating on, uh, I think, Platonism, which is like the like the ancient Greece. It was like the early uh, philosophy of the ancient Greeks, which is pretty sick. There was matter and then there's the intelligence that forms matter. And I just read that and I was like, whoa, I wonder what that stuff is. And I laid down <laughs> into a theta state and I'm sitting there just like, whoa, whoa, all these cool thoughts that I never remember. And it just, dude, I'm just having a good time, dude, just thinking about goodness, truth and beauty. And all of a sudden it was just like, you left the doggy bags in the laundry. It was like a meteor just coming into my consciousness. And I was like, and I, I came out of it. And I was like, what? It was like the dog bags are laundry. They're all unraveled now. Just holds them to me. I go, whoa, dude. I was like, man. Wait, I, with shitting them? No, no, no. no. Right. Fuck, dude. That'd be crazy. That would be fully I mean, deserved. Pocketed. I dog like, shit, dude. I, I left a happen. decent amount of stuff. I left like a full vape pen in the laundry. I left, it was like there was a decent knapsack of stuff. 
<laughs> come on, dude. Bro. Hey, come on. I ain't fucking, I'm off please, my ears and bullshit. Please don't grind my gears for this. Please what? don't fuck with me on that. That's what you got to tell you later. Oh, dude. I, well, like, I can't stuff in the laundry. Like, I, look, there's going to be stuff in the laundry that's what sometimes. I told her. That's what I told her. I was like, look, I do my best. That's going to be stuff sometimes. But I started laughing. I was like, dude, dude consciousness rules so hard. I was basically Play-Doh for two hours just being like, wow, dude, the fucking newest just fucking comes and forms all this matter. That's so cool. And I was thinking about how it was so tight, dude. I can't yeah. remember what I was thinking, but it was I was full Play-Doh just like this. Oh, and all of a sudden it came screaming in. It's dude. a woman's consciousness. Sophia, dude, came screaming into my consciousness. <laughs> and I was just like, woke up. I was like, oh, man. Yeah. I'm thinking about goodness, truth, and beauty. You're all dog. You're monitoring you're about, the dog you're bags. You're about dog bags. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, dude. I wish I could take you into my fucking realm. Uh, yeah, the babes aren't in that realm. She shadows in the cave, dude. They'll, they'll never be in there. See, they're full shadows in the cave. I hate the fact that they can't rise to the sublime heights of pure thought with me. But dude, I, I got There's, fucking, for real. I laughed. For I real, woke, that guy. I woke up. That's and was true, like, dude. It's I know, true. I know, dude. They can't. Dude. Like, don't you see? That's not a real concern. They're I'm, plastic fucking dog bags. They can flip the vape cartridges. Yeah, I'll buy another one. I, I was like, let me see if that works. Did but it? I'll give her that. Reverse that. If I'm like. I could do that. I can go girl brain. I can be like, nice. Now I have something to fucking drill her on. Yes. Uh, you left the dog bags in there. It's not a big deal. <laughs> I do that all the time. I'm not mad. See how this works? I don't get mad about it. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. That's just another thing yeah. that assaults. Because it's like, yeah, but you don't care about that. Therefore, you can't bring it up because that we care about different stuff. I care about truth. <sighs> goodness, truth, and beauty, dude. Dude, you want to know the opposite of goodness, truth, and beauty? What? Last night. Tom tossed on one of his fucking oh, hellish no, faces of death videos. Come on, man. Stop that. I couldn't watch it. I was sitting there. Of course not, dude. And then I was then I was getting fucked up about it. I was like, this is the worst things in humanity. Yeah. It was. It was like Middle Eastern fucking executions. Yeah. It was terrible. Now, here's a question. He, he, they can I don't have Tommy up here to field this one. But what the fuck's going on? The point like know. fire that up. I don't know. I've been reading a lot about I the shadow. Putting, I was putting on cat videos. It's good. We were having a good time. That's we were, goodness, truth, cop, and beauty. Cops singing the national anthem poorly. <laughs> it's just as funny as it gets. Red glare. <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest. <laughs> the bomb bursting. <laughs> where, do you, where do you find? That's a thing. You must find that your theta state. That's the, You find the sickest shit to YouTube. Couldn't I don't be know funny. what to YouTube. Dude. Couldn't be funnier. I don't know what to YouTube. Because then they, the camera's panning and showing dudes trying to like holding the flag like. <laughs> <laughs> there's one where this dude obviously doesn't know the words he's saying he's like oh say <laughs> he closes with and the home of the free <laughs> who's asking the, the these guys the local dudes is filming just different <laughs> cops <laughs> dude there's a big dude that's just staring at it like <laughs> he's so pissed and then it cuts to this young dude who's for real dying like you can see he's like and then he, you can see him you know do that thing where you like swallow a laugh where you're just like okay oh chill the fuck out <laughs> stop laughing and then he starts to try to sing along with the guy and then he's like the bomb's bombing and he realizes the guy's singing the wrong lyrics and just starts dying again oh, that might be wonderful. the funniest thing in the world yeah I'll give it to Jay. He started during the fireworks. He started playing like Roseanne's national anthem, like the Great. worst, the worst national anthems. I was just wanting. It was so. I wanted to funny. get back to that. Where was he getting the me so horny from? That's a classic fucking. There's. I don't want to put dirt on his name. That's but a, there's there's a tough ladder to get up to the roof. So he did the best thing possible, which was I'm not even going to risk trying to climb that ladder. I'm going to sit down here and ruin it for everybody that did climb the ladder. That's a strong move. It was. I had to give it up to him. I was like, damn, that's really funny. That's at, so as, a, as above, so there's below. There's a big beat. I mean, yeah, that was a demon reaching up. Me, like, if I can't have it, no one can. He was in 80s, dude. <laughs> he was in 80s and he reached out. But it was out. necessary. It was, he was right. In the end, he was right. He did ruin an incredible fireworks display with Me songs so that horny. were like... Yeah, ass and titties, ass and titties, ass and titties. <laughs> that rules. Yeah, he might be the bejeweled crab from Moana. That's the, the <laughs> demon that attacked you. <laughs> yeah. <true. laughs> Did I tell you I went on YouTube and I saw uh, hallucinogenic entities and they broke them down by like seven different types, dude? The I confronted the jester 
and there was a black and white tiled floor is the exact thing I fucking saw. They did artist renditions. And Speaking I was like, of black and white tiled floors. Yes. <laughs> yes. Luis Gomez lived in a one bedroom, entirely tiled room with a dog that was feral for I don't know how long, but that was part of his origin story that was making me howl. black and white tile floor. Black, just a fully tiled studio, fucking floor to ceiling tiled. Hell, is, is he Hunter and J. He's Gomez? His, he's Hunter J. Gomez, he too. And his dog was a menace and would try to escape. If he opened the door, it'd be like, <laughs> like, like hold on. <laughs> so, yes, it was a bit. It was Lewis might be the funniest dude of all time. Yeah. Butterly was talking about how that's a serious hood phenomenon. It's like having a dog that must be put in another room if anyone else comes over or it will bite people. Yeah, it's great. crazy. That's crazy, dude. I'm a pretty bad dog trainer, but I definitely get my dogs not to bite. Except Matilda might attack shoes, depending on what they yeah, are. Yeah, I think I might have done that. Uh, you did, dude. You imprinted on Matilda. Yeah. By assailing her with your military boots. Oh, uh, yeah. That was fun, though. That was great. She had fun. She had a blast. And now she thinks it's on. Every time like a work a guy comes in boots. with like, work boots, she's like, I have to be like, I have to like shepherd them. I did it all the time with Matilda. Oh, it's hilarious. It was nonstop. I'd be sitting there playing video games, yeah. and I would just... Matilda spent her basically dog adolescence in the house on uh, Mount Vernon. Yeah, it's a good place to raise. Dude, we Damn. were laughing so hard. I was thinking about when Finnell's dog just walked up and took Chris Wood's food. That was that was juicy. And that was juicy. Oh, that, oh, was that was blue. Oh, blue. That was blue. Fuck yeah. Blue, blue just took you to the so streets. so fucking funny, dude. Just took you to the Is streets. Blue still alive? Yeah. Yes. Blue probably has another year or so. Blue's hanging in. Blue's out on that the parents' farm. The, that was one of the dumbest fucking dogs I've ever seen in my That's life. That's crazy, dude. I've never seen a dog like that. Dude, that was like a Guatemala Chihuahua, like street dog. That was a dingo. That was a fucking dingo. If you look at that's like a native South American street dog. It's like a dingo. They're like that these thing, fucked up coyote but he was hybrids. Chill. He was a chill fucking dog. Until he isn't, dude. Yeah. The first couple days I went to his dog bed and fuck like, he'll like fucking freak on people sometimes and go full Mexico City. <laughs> but watching him just absolutely bully a human dude i've never seen it dude the dog walked up slowly yeah <laughs> slowly took it out of his fucking hands and this is back we didn't have no one had money no that was wood's meal that was all he ate all that day. was big his meals were crazy his dude. meals were crazy but i in his he did hook it up for me he did there'd be times where i'd have no meals and he'd say hey he i got you. a bowl of fucking like beans and tuna it was a hummus and tortillas it was hummus yeah it was like hummus five pitas and then like a ton of chicken. Yeah, it was good. He it was actually good. You your off. gruel. That's your yummy. gruel was fucking True, nice. Yeah. I'm I missed the like gruel. gruel. Gruel's good. I need that gruel. Fire it up in Aus. Yeah. Fire up some gruel. You think you can make gruel in Australia? I'll get a stinger, bro. Yeah. I'll make us chi-chis, dude. Dude, I was listening. To, speaking of Australia, I've been listening to fucking plane crashes. What? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, you were listening to the black box. I started listening to black box, dude. What the fuck? Well, it was just one night. It's not like I'm doing this regularly. Still, and then I wicked. There's a website where you can see everybody's last, the last sentence of every black box in a plane crash. What do they give something nice? Some of them are funny. Some of them are like mountains, <laughs> which is very funny. Does anyone play me so horny? Some of them are very sad. It's like Amy, I love you. And it's like not bad. Fuck. He knew. Yeah. He knew he was going to be able to say it. I mean. The one was like, Mom, I love you. Nice. Yeah. It's, that's, but that, nice. I was talking to Chris about it. I was like, I don't want those pilots. I want the guy who's still, because there's some pilots that are still trying shit the whole way yeah. down calmly. They're like, okay, we're going to go ahead and switch this. All right. That's not working. Uh, go ahead and try this. Looks like we're going to be coming in pretty hot. Oh. <laughs> Just fucking. Yeah. Yeah, that's that Air Force training, bro. I like that. I don't like that. I don't want a pilot that's like, oh, God. <laughs> like, There's several of those. Yeah, getting emotional. Yeah. I'm out. I want a guy who's trying till the very end. True pilots. Like, this is obviously the way I was going to go. Yeah. Sorry. Theory sorry wreckage. to the 300 people behind me. I knew I was going this way. <laughs> yeah, that's just part of their fucking. That's like the, uh, whatchamacallit. That's the Sati tradition. <laughs> They're the Egyptian king. And that's all of their subjects. True, <laughs> true. You're Dude, in my tomb. They dug yep. up those tombs. There'd be like up to like 300 people buried with some of the Egyptian pharaohs. That's how I want to go. Pretty wild. You just getting buried alive. Just be. No, a I want to die piece. and then make sure everybody that was around me does get buried alive. It should be legal again. Maybe yeah. by the, they might. Re they might legalize sooty. Yeah, we could. Because, dude, get a religious exemption. I read a thing. There, <laughs> I read a getting religious exemption out of sooty. Yeah, I read a thing. Uh, apparently. <laughs> 
and I don't know if this was like a skewed data point, but they said that 25% of the deaths in like Finland or some Scandinavian country were euthanasia. They get a sense. lot of the bros are being like, put me down. That makes sense. Like medical death. It's a lot, dude. It is. But if you think about it, that's how many people make it to fucking full geese. Yeah. And like riddled with fucking disease and dementia. Yeah. 25%. Like just knock them out. It's a sick NPR fan. I feel like a lot of NPR Unless listeners break want to be out euthanized. I might be able to I break out. I burden of it. my family as much. You want to? I think I could break out. Just dude. like one day, just be like, ah, ah, this is where I am. What are you watching? Golf? Put on golf. Put golf on. <laughs> Has anyone ever what busted out of it? I think I, I can get out of it. Busted out. I think I, I might go the opposite route. I might actually start remembering stuff when I get older. Like, oh, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> There's my keys. I might finally find my keys when I'm like 80. Yeah. I'll be like, what the hell? Dude, there's my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. That uh, that stinks. I was talking a little, uh, whatchamacallit, forgot the word for it, Alzheimer's. It's really I was talking sad. Alzheimer's. It stinks, dude. Yeah. Apparently, they all think, or a lot of them think that the people taking care of them are stealing from them. I thought that was just my mom's aunt. That's a lot of them. No, They're I mean, like, I'm sure f- you, if you're confused all the time, you're very paranoid about people, strangers walking in and fucking uh, coming that's around. That's true. Be like, holy shit, there's a new guy. He's in my house. <laughs> Get out of here. Thief. <laughs> that's what they I'm trying do. to watch the goth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching goth. That's got to suck, too, because my mom's aunt. Ernie was- Els is on. Get out of here, thief. <laughs> I'd be sick if they only remember PGA legends. Probably. That might be Gary the only Player. thing tethering tether him to reality. <laughs> There he is. I don't like that Tiger Woods character. <laughs> why, Grandma? You, that's the only thing you can muster is like talking about Tiger Woods. Like, why is everyone being weird about my takes on Tiger Woods? Yeah, sorry, I don't Where like him. Where am I right now? <laughs> yeah. And why is there a black golfer? What the fuck is going on? What the fuck? That'd be Dude. nice to not remember. You're completely like Citizen Zero. You can't remember any. You're yeah. ju- what's the what was the soldier in the one movie? Matthew Damon. Jason Bourne. Jason Bourne. You're born identity every yeah. morning, dude. You wake up, you craft yeah, your pants. Somehow you, I know how to you, do. You craft your pants. <laughs> somehow like, I do know how to do racism still. <laughs> yeah, it's the only thing you know. In the restaurant, just like there's five Puerto Ricans over by the back. <laughs> <laughs> there's a Jamaican lady who says my she's my live-in nurse. There's I a, don't believe her. There's a mixed fella in the booth over. <laughs> I got to get out of here. That's probably why they end up on the side of the highway. I can rollerblade 17 <laughs> miles out of the city right now. That's why they end up they end up walking on the fucking like a two lane highway with all their stuff from the diner. They just see all the minorities and they're just there's like too many minorities. There's no minorities on here. Yeah. But then they get to the side of the highway and guess what? That's minority city. True. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've noticed that's the. Uh, that's like, where they like to hang out. A lot of barbecues are on like the side of like the Wissahickon, like a lot of Puerto Rican families. Really? They're just setting up. They set, set up, up shop, like yeah, they observing set up, the road. We not on. It's not the side of the road. It's the side of like the Wissahickon on the, like the river. Oh, okay. You'll go down there with your dog, and it'll just be like a full like party. And you're like, whoa, man, that's pretty awesome. That was a long trek to get down there. Yeah, those guys don't mind trekking. No, nah, man. Especially for a good time. That's a great time. Especially some cervezas by the Rio. Yeah, man. It's time. It's a good time. Um, Speaking of time. Woo! Nice. Hot diggity dog. There was one plane crash in San Diego where this, this this Boeing was flying in. These two dinguses in a fucking Cessna <laughs> were practicing landing. And uh, you can you can read the transcript. Air traffic controls like, uh, just so you know, there's a Cessna around you guys about within five miles. And the pilots are laughing. They, you, they're like, oh, these fucking idiots. What the hell? Where are these guys? Then they find them. They're like, all right, there they are. They're about a mile off to the right. And then a couple minutes later, air traffic control is like, do you guys still see them, the Cessna? And they were like, no, nah, they must have gone right. We don't see them anymore. Turns out the Cessna was directly below them at this <gasps> point. So the Boeing goes to land, starts starts going down, hits the fucking Cessna. Oh, my don't. This is in San Diego in 1973, I think. Bro, the Boeing obviously crashes. <gasps> what? The whole plane goes down. The Cessna, those boys are kaput. Those, yeah, they fried. Fuck. But the fucking thing lands in a neighborhood, <laughs> kills like eight more people in the neighborhood. 170 people on board are dead, obviously. What? Yeah. Real bummer. But it's also reassuring that plane crashes happen in America like once every fucking takes. It's it's very rare. Is it? It's I never extremely knew. extremely rare. 
I'm always wondering, like, dude, I feel like I heard. Of, I'm always like thinking, like, I swear I just heard about a plane crash. It's no, it's very rare. Yeah, I guess you're right. But also, you got to remind yourself because I fly a lot, and I'm always I'm True. thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, even if you were like, all right, let's say there was a major air accident today. Yeah, the day I'm flying. If it came from this airport, statistically, I'd still be extremely unlikely. There's Ooh, so many flights. That's true. The odds of it being on my plane are out of, you know. True, but if it was, how bad would you be like, ain't that about a bitch? I'd say, isn't it ironic? Ain't that about a bitch? A little too ironic. What did I do? Yeah, that would stink. Yeah, especially on the way to Australia, if it just nosedives over the ocean out of nowhere. Yeah, never to be but found. But if we're asleep in our nice little pods. <gasps> That'd be nice, dude shit faced in a pod there's worse ways to go that's a good way to go there's a worse way like to go. i'm with my friend we're gonna have a fucking theater tour in australia this is fucking awesome leonard skinner's status dude that would be skinner people leonard would go skinner. back and play this podcast and be like damn this is sweet home alabama this shit's incredible oh for sure they did it bam, bam, bam. everybody yeah, would pretty much. It a bit. turn it up everyone would forgive us dude pretty much did it i told you my dream was to become a host at helium did it done Done. Mine, my win Philly's funniest. Yeah, dude, done. Done. Now it's, it's over. Now we're in bonus level. As you, that's it. Dude. What were you saying? We're yeah. Sonic bonus level. Yeah, it's collecting coins. That's it. This is it. It's we all it. there is. And then nah. getting, dude, all it really is is getting a hand job, getting a hand, or giving yourself a hand job, jerking off, aka jerking off. Yeah, get your nipple sucked. Phew, we, dude. If you don't think for a second. Then I'm gonna give that a shot. You have to. After the woo pig suey when I chase her into the room. <laughs> <laughs> have that as a snack. Go feast. Feast, I'll feast. when she gets back. But I'll like gorge myself. On a I'll night, maybe she stuffed. has a cold. Maybe she has a cold or something. <laughs> Just be like perfect, dude. Jackpot. You're a little sleepy. Get a little snot in there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> That'd be sweet. What a sweet treat for my nipples. Oh my god. Yeah, said, babe, dude. could you suckle at me? Can you suck my nipples? Suckle. I used to be ashamed to ask. Now there's just no shame whatsoever. It's just like, yo. Do you do it like, do you demand it? Are you like, no, I, I, suck my nipples? Come here. If she, if, if she said like, I don't have it in me to suck your nipples, I might hit her with the old like, all right. Well, there's going to be might apes in the laundry her. tomorrow. I'll tell you that. You what? There's, there's going to be some shit in the laundry. <laughs> I need just to clear my mind. I'm going to go walk the dogs. Do you know where the bags are? Yeah, yeah. I, I would. I would definitely threaten her. If she refuses to suck, you have to throw. Oh shit, we got dumb ads. Ah, it's just a sheath, right? Perhaps it's just the sheath. I believe nine hey thousand fucking emails. Let me tell you about sheath underwears. Nice these- PGA tour shows looking for comedians, and they want me. Nice dude, <laughs> look at that. It's time for me to talk golf. That's crazy, dude. Are you gonna sit there and be like a commentator? Ooh, here we go. I'll fire it up. Matt, Patreon hit. We're rich. Oh, really? Sick. Matt, we did it. Sick. We did it, baby. We got money. Break out the red panties. We did it, baby. We're fucking another month, dude. A month to month. Until I get sucked up into the fucking Guys, evil enterprise. That God is bless working. America. And God bless Sheath Underwear. Sheath Underwear Just keeps your balls off your legs. I'm wearing them right now, for real. Look at that. That's funny. I'd attribute that to my incredibly small penis. <laughs> yeah. I always thought it was because of my small penis that my dick and nuts never even touched my fat thighs that are nearly touching. Uh, this idea for Sheath came from its founder, U.S. Army soldier, dude. Just forgive me for You're laughing disrespecting at all. a future U.S. Sorry, Army soldier. U.S. Army soldier Robert Patton during his second tour in Iraq, dude. Second? Yeah, second. It worked for him. It'll work for you. Support the show and support this awesome veteran-owned company. Go to sheathunderwear.com. Use promo code DRENCH to get 20% off your first order. Every order comes with Sheath's 100% money-back guarantee. So you can just crap in these things. And be like, I want my fucking money back. For sure. Mail them back to them. You could for sure do that. <laughs> Every order with Sheath's. Uh, that's sheathunderwear.com. Promo code DRENCHED. Get Sheath underwear and let them support your balls. Dude, you know what I was For real, about? get Sheath. Those things fucking roll. They are nice. You know what I was thinking about today, or actually the other day, that we're essentially just carrying, we're a biological organism carrying our father's penis into the future. Then our children carry our penis, and we're just a penis being carried oh, into the future. What a burden on my young son. It's crazy, dude. My boy is going to, fuck, he's going <laughs> to. But he's got to carry it. He's going to have to strike me he's down. He's got to carry it. He's say, you burden me. <laughs> <laughs> what is you know, this? I'll be, I'll be like Robert the Bruce's dad in Braveheart. I'll be like, <laughs> covered in blood. You must yeah, carry it into betray it. Betray him. You must carry it into the future. 
You must have our sex with a must live. big butted Irish waitress. Carry our penis into the future. <laughs> Fucking right, dude. See if you can find a fat ass pale chick. Oh yeah, big fat pale butt at a bar. That's the torch. For, that's a torchbearer of a small Irish penis, dude. <laughs> a small Irish penis, just a drunk small penis, <laughs> fat butted whore. <laughs> Finally, our legacy continues. <laughs> we continue to strive forward as a burden on civilization. <laughs> oh, we're man. not contributing. We're that's taking. A, I'm a hard worker, dude. That's the fucking trawl. You do need the guy that's... That's the trawl, dude. Just an alcoholic working. For sure. Yeah. For sure. You do need the worker bees. I saw that sticker and I said, you know what? That's kind of nice. Just to be like, yeah. I fucking lay bricks. This is the way I feel about it. Everything. It's all. It is fully automatic. Because I was like, I looked at it. I'm like, <laughs> still is. Because I was like, I wonder how that guy feels about Trump. And I was like, no, I know exactly. I could tell you exactly. Not to be a dick. I'm like, yeah. I just know it's. Look, it's I don't like automatic. him, but he tells the truth. It's fully, it's fully <laughs> <laughs> yeah, automatic. <laughs> oh my god, you can't even talk about it anymore. You can't even. You can't even fucking joke around. Yeah, man, it's pretty nuts. To think about that. <sighs> that's that's apparently the thing of a uh, one of the things in Jungian therapy. We're just archetypes. We're just fully just preloaded things that emerge into like a pattern that already existed that yeah. takes on a different flavor due to like the cultural or the culture around it. And then like certain people come up through that and like and self-create into a new thing. Mm. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. You want to go to the Patreon and have a good yes, time? Yes. Yes. Have a very good time. You want to get crazy on there? Very crazy. <sighs> it's Let's time go. to get crazy. Let's Goodbye. go. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you for listening.